Today we got special guest, my great friend Howard Paul from Savannah, Georgia. One of the baddest guitar players in the world. And we're going to talk about music and music and music and life. But first, let's talk about some music. Ciao, Domenico. Francesco, Sergio, Nunya, I'm doing good, how's everything in Europe? Hey Herb, how you doing? You like this road sound? can hide love because it's all around Thank you. 
Everybody, happy Wednesday. Getting some reports that the video is choppy. Oh, that's a drag. Must be one of those internet days. Oh, I can even see that the internet is saying that uh, it's not good today. Hmm. Well, that's one out of my control. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Uh, could be everything needs to be rebooted. But anyhow, we're glad to see you here. And uh, it seems like uh, the weather is the weather. I apologize for that. Boy, that's the first time in a long time we've got choppy video. That sucks. What are you going to do? <laughs> Looks like, you know, actually my internet was working slow when I tried to get to Howard uh, on the internet. But uh, I don't know exactly how to fix that right now. But what we're going to do is I want to bring you to the interview section because I'm so excited to meet my friend. It's been so long since we caught up. And actually seen each other live. So I'm going to take you over to my guest feed. And you see Howard Paul. Hey, Howard. How are you, hey, man? Hey, Tony. <laughs> I'm good. What, what are all those things behind you over there? <laughs> well, those are my uh, my virtual uh, guitars. Wow. It's so good to see you, Howard. How are you, man? I'm doing I'm doing well, you know, all things considered. I'm really happy it's 2021 20, now. Yeah, man. God Been, bless uh, us. Waiting a whole year for this and uh I'm optimistic <laughs> that uh we'll start to eventually be able to see one another again and play some gigs and uh travel a little bit. Man, that sure that's is a, that sure is the goal. Um it's been uh, really rough. I know for you, for me, I'm starting to get a little stir crazy. How about you? Uh, yeah, you know, we're we're both guys who spend our lives on the road, um, and you know, I haven't been on an airplane since uh, I guess uh, April or February, February 29th, I guess, uh, leap year last year, and the next day I flew back to Savannah. I haven't been on a plane since, and. Uh, and there, you can't really drive anywhere either because uh, nobody wants you. <laughs> nobody wants you in their neighborhood uh, unless you're quarantined before you get there. So it's a, uh, it's it's a little bizarre. You know, it's a bizarre year. 
It sure is. You know, I tell you, uh, I was just thinking about it this morning when I was on my treadmill. I get on my treadmill. You saw that. I put on the big screen like some outdoor scenery, and I put this fan on. Makes me feel like I'm out, you know, because I don't ride the bicycle anymore since I broke my arm. (laughs) But I was wondering today, I I forgot where I put my passport. It was like 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 a really bad feeling, like, oh, my God, what if I get called to go to uh, abroad i forget where i put my passport i'm gonna go have to go find it again you know it's crazy better to lose it now than uh you know four hours before you're supposed to drive to the airport you know what i'm saying man wow so uh you're pretty much hung up there in uh in the area savannah probably driving a little bit to hilton head i would assume some huh yeah in fact i've got a gig tonight and savannah's been really uh for from a, a gig perspective, it's it's a little bit of an embarrassment of riches uh, because we've been able to keep playing here for the most part. Not 100% of normal, but maybe 80% of what we're used to seeing in gigs. And so um, I have two gigs this week, a couple next week. I think Valentine's week, I've got four gigs over the course of the week. And they're, you know, they're a lot of outdoor stuff uh, or, um, you know, pretty segregated stuff, some live stream, but uh, surprisingly, we're still doing some live, live music here and we're having audiences show up for it, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Wow. That's a blessing in disguise. Just, just having some audiences, you know? Yeah. Now, uh, is that because uh, uh, Hilton Head is more of a tourist place uh what's your what's your suspicions? yeah uh, both savannah and hilton head are tourist places uh it's a pretty temperate climate here mm-hmm. so um while it's chilly today yesterday it was 78 degrees here mm. um so people are outside they're on the street they're at almost every restaurant uh here has outdoor dining with some heating lamps and uh so there's still a ton of activity here mm-hmm. and and you know because the we have mandatory masking laws in savannah but not in the state of georgia uh so people feel it's a little bit uh more approachable down here than it is in in other states and because it's temperate people can come down take a vacation and be able to go outside wander around not go to the beach or whatever and not feel uh like they're locked into a hotel room uh, as they would if they were in New York or L.A. or San Francisco or someplace like that. Wow. Well, I mean, that's a blessing for you uh, to be able to still be working some. At least you can uh, keep your chops going, you know. There's a lot of musicians that aren't working it. I'm sure their chops are starting to, uh, you know, they're starting to feel like their chops are becoming very heavy, you know, so to speak, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we're, um, we're pretty lucky in that respect oh that's that's just good news to hear howard i mean i just can't wait till i could come down here and play together with you i miss uh miss playing uh perhaps maybe uh once uh some of these vaccinations get going i want to be vaccinated first just because i have you know uh some copd issues but uh, other than as soon as that happens i'm giving you a call we're gonna have to try well to make as soon as you get happen. your vaccination this needs to be your first stop <laughs> well it'll be a good 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 fun you know get down there and and feel uh, feel the love from you and um, and everything. Um, unfortunately, on our broadcast today, there's something going on with uh, the internet services today, so they can hear us real good, but our video is a little choppy. But that's okay. Yeah, actually, everything looks great from where I'm sitting, and I'm wow. I uh, know our, our 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 video looks good. I'm looking at it on uh, uh, on on the Facebook feed and also Instagram. All three of them, just checking them, and they're all. They all look pretty good. So. Oh, well, that's okay. Then maybe it's just the yeah. CPU that's uh, something. Maybe I got to, you know, man, this computer world today, it's amazing how much stuff we're doing. If you remember our first interview, um, you were, um, uh, we had to, I don't know what happened, but, you know, I used to try to run both the Zoom meeting and the and the uh, broadcast on the same computer. That wasn't happening very good. So as you could tell, I'm talking to you on another computer. But uh, thanks to some gamers, uh, they showed me how you could bring the video feed from one computer 
into the other. So I'm actually using a Macintosh for my interview with Howard, but my standard uh, PC that I use for the broadcast here. So it's amazing we can do this now and not have interruptions in video and all that. That's fantastic. Wow. It's, so, uh, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I think that's one of the lessons from this whole thing is that uh, that you better learn – how to up your technology game if you want to stay relevant today. It's uh, and not everybody has access to it. Not everybody has access to the kind of broadband that we need. Not everybody can afford the gear that you need to be able to participate in these sorts of things. And uh, that's it's really unfortunate. It's uh, you know kids kids in poor school districts. Mm really suffer from not having technology and participating in class yes and and i think musicians maybe suffer next for not uh having the technology and technical savvy uh maybe to be able to link to audiences so it'll, it'll be good when this is all over it sure is let me ask you some questions uh about uh your um your business of making guitars uh, how how is everything going with uh, benedetto guitars yeah, you know, it's uh, surprisingly uh, good. Last year was uh, obviously a tough year for everybody. Um, but we were able to stay open, keep manufacturing, except for about nine or ten weeks uh, in June, July time frame, wow. uh, where there were mandatory stay-at-home orders here. Um, but even with the mandatory stay-at-home orders, I was able to keep two or three critical employees uh, in the shop. So the guitars that had already been built, but not gone through the finishing process. I had one guy that could come in every day, work on his own in his own environment and finish guitars. And uh, our master luthier, Damon Milan, was able to come in every day, mm -hmm. work in his own shop and do the, all the final assembly on guitars that had already been built and were now being finished. And then I was able to uh, be at work every day along with uh, Jackson Evans, who helps me out with uh, uh, both sales and marketing. And we were able to sell and ship guitars uh, throughout that whole period. So while it wasn't the norm and, and it took, we had to change gears in terms of travel and visiting universities and, and you know, trade shows like NAM, where we would all be this week if, uh, if it was a normal world. Uh, we managed to be able to continue selling guitars, qualify for uh, the Paycheck Protection Program so that uh, employees uh, were able to get paid even if they weren't able to work uh, full time. And uh, so we survived it. And uh, That's beautiful. And now we're pretty much caught up in our finishing department and, and production is back up and running uh, most full tilt again uh the the election you know the last quarter of 2020 was pretty horrible for sales mm -hmm. and i think part of it was people were just paying attention to uh the election part of it was we didn't really have any clear picture of how long any of this was going to last and people were starting to really get worried that a vaccine wouldn't come and then a big part of it was and it's not something that you know we think about but I'm trying to buy ads in order to make sure the Benedetto name stays in front of people when they log onto their accounts. And, and because of the elections, it drove all the advertising prices through the roof and gave priority to campaign ads. So little mom and pop companies like ours, and Benedetto really is a tiny little company, we kind of fell off of everybody's radar, radar because we couldn't compete for uh, internet advertising the way bigger companies are able to do that so it was a the whole thing was just a just like you and your studio you know it was a lot of scrambling to figure out how we were going to keep everything floating until the light switch was turned back on boy you know people that don't have small businesses or businesses at all that are working uh if they're fortunate enough to have been been able to keep their job uh don't understand but uh, the small business people and the individuals out there definitely can hear what, what you what you're talking about. And, 
you know, I'm in a similar thing. Even though people consider me an entertainment, an, an entertainer, uh, entertainment is what I do. The business I'm in is in the entertainment business, just like you. So, you know, to buy ads, uh, how do you buy ads? <laughs> you know, when the when the income stream is not coming like it used to or it should be. And like you said, the campaign ads were, were taking priority, so the demand for for ad space shot up so we're to the to the price where you can't afford it. And and it can drive a small business out of business. Uh so you're 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 a success story. You're still in business, Howard, you know. Well, we're you know, we we're survivalists and and you know, this company's been around for fifty two years now. Mm. And uh, I'm not going to be the one to wreck it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm, come hell or high water, we're going to make sure that uh, we're able to survive. And we do that with a lot of help. Yeah. Um, and you had a chance to meet Dave Miner before, of course. And Dave's been just incredibly helpful in making sure that we were able to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, the the other thing is, and then this is maybe the hardest side of this, is you know about. I, I tell people about 30% of our customers are professional jazz guitarists. They're uh, faculty members who taught them to be professional jazz guitarists, and jazz guitar professors, or students who are learning to be professional jazz guitarists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, about 30% of the people who are buying and playing Benedetto guitars mm -hmm. are full-time professional musicians and faculty members. And all of them have been out of work. Yeah. You know, the, the hobbyists who buy high-end guitars, they've kept their jobs for the most part. And uh, some of them have done really, really well uh, in, in the market. Mm -hmm. And so they've been able to, you know, to continue to be at home and maybe even spend a little bit more time and effort learning music. And they can buy new guitars and, and, and uh, have uh, ship them to them. But thirty percent of the people to play our instruments, including the very greatest jazz guitarists in the world, none of them are on stage playing right now. No, it's terrible. I I, I know. I know. It's it's horrible, Howard. I I explain that uh, to my customers when I'm playing that you know if you feel like giving a, a tip, uh, I don't I don't expect them, although I appreciate them. But actually, I survive from them. That's that's one way right. that I survive. Um, and, uh, you know, I can understand that if I didn't have the savvy to do this and also the fortunate that I lived in Columbus, Ohio during my career uh, that I built up, that I had to find a second business in order to survive. And that was teaching. And so I want to yeah. attest to what you what you just said when you were talking about, you know, there are some people that are the the, the uh, maybe semi retired kind of maybe a little they, they put a little bit of money away uh they can afford a benedetto guitar because this maybe hasn't affected their bottom line like like some people exactly. and that, my 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 uh group of people who have increased in turn in terms of lessons are just those kind of people so i was kind of like blessed you know listen man we don't always get lucky you know karma and all that stuff is is just part of life we don't always get lucky like i remember in 2006 when we had to close our construction business because we were on the wrong end of the stick back then um it wasn't about how good you were in business or how savvy you were if you lose business because there's no business to be had you're out of business you know and uh, this time i got a little bit more lucky just because i had uh, my uh, a teaching business already built up and my reputation there. So um, I just wanted to affirm what you just said. You know, thank God for those A customers, right, that uh, that are still there and they have the income to spend. And, and that's that's beautiful thing, you know. But I'll bet you when you look at the whole picture, it's still not what it was, right? It, it can't be, right? It can't be. No, it's, it's not. And, um, you know, little companies like us um you know we're, we're people people i guess everybody out there who's watching this has a very different view of what benedetto is yeah and uh a lot of people think it's a, a huge company we have 11 employees um 
we only make about a hundred, well, we don't even make a hundred guitars. We typically make about uh, 85 guitars a year. We try to make about a hundred to 120 a year, but that's, we just don't have the capacity to do that. That's quite a and lot. it's intentional to be that small. We don't want to make 10,000 guitars and be a bigger company because we can't build the quality that we want to build mm. at scale. Mm -hmm. So we're intentionally very small and very nimble and uh and the whole idea behind a company like this is to to preserve the tr tradition not to get rich and people don't necessarily uh understand that so uh we're one of these really really small companies that will always kind of struggle just to you know to maintain a presence even though it's a brand that's known around the world and, you know people think we only make thirty thousand dollar guitars or whatever and that's you know we make some of those <laughs> but we also try to make guitars for professional musicians at the five to seven thousand dollar range mm. and that's a good big chunk of what we do yeah. so you have to kind of be able to do everything if you lose one segment of your business like the professional uh more affordable guitars that's money right out of the mm. bottom line of the company and Big time. you got to replace it from somewhere it comes out of your pocket yeah so it's a yeah you, you've been there before you've been in business for a long time oh, a you, couple different businesses it's yeah. not it's it's not easy you got to save up the nuts for these kind of days you know that's right. the, that's the truth and uh thank god uh i know that the reason why i started this segment was because i wanted to bring on people that i admire you know what I feel about you. We've been friends for a long time, but there's a reason why we've been friends because we respect each other and we work hard. And uh, that's why I want people to see that no matter how hard it gets, you just got to get in there and work harder. You can't ever give up because when you give up, you've you lost and uh that's right you're a success story howard you got some more pictures of uh the the, the factory <laughs> i don't know let me see if i, I want to see uh, what you got behind there i appreciate the I fact can... that you're doing this away from there that way you're staying safe that's really cool you know yeah yeah no problem uh let me see how i can do this i think i can change my background yeah there There's you go my background filters and uh, and I'll, oh, there you go. There's you a that? there's a gentleman working on a guitar. I'll, I'll move out of the way. Yeah. There's, okay. Uh, I got it. Okay. One of our luthiers working. I'll, I'll just get out of the. I remember that now. room. I've been in that room. Yep. Yeah. We played a party I'm right gonna stay, outside. I'm gonna stand over, stay over to the side here. We played a party there right is, outside uh, there, didn't we? Play a party right outside there one time. You. We did. I? We played a fundraiser for. Uh, something i can't yeah. remember what it was so. i love that shop what else oh there to go get There's ready our, to do the painting our, huh our paint room wow some of these are kind of older pictures wow yeah well not many new pictures to take these days <laughs> wow that's great Howard. there's another one of our that's paint amazing. room a little close-up of uh what the kind of work we do man so one thing I noticed when you play the the guitar, the Benedetto guitar that you play, I play with a lot of different guitar players. The tone from top to bottom is very stable. So in other words, it doesn't jump out in different areas. What what do you what do you what is the secret? I mean, that's why they're expensive guitars. What's the secret to that? To building a guitar that has a consistent tone. Well, I I think um, I think it has to do with uh being inconsistent you know ah, okay um guitars are made of organic materials every piece of wood is unique the nitrocellulose lacquer that we're spraying is being you know built up layer after layer after layer and they're not identical layers every time uh so a lot like going into a great restaurant mm -hmm. and you hire a great chef and he's got recipes, but the the meat that you buy and the produce that you're sourcing and the and the the volume of what you're trying to create and the heat, you know, of the you know of the burners and the quality of the pots that you're using, all of those things affect 
the meal, right? Of course. So what a great chef does is he improvises. He's got a recipe and he follows the recipe uh, and he's got all the right tools to be able to make something identical every time. But if the materials you're putting in aren't identical, mm -hmm. then when you build it identically every time, you get inconsistency in the finished product, right? Uh -huh. So when you have a small shop like this and you have guys working in the shop by hand who are taught that the piece of wood in front of them is the component to make that specific guitar. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a part, but it's a part of a specific instrument. Then they pay attention to making sure that it fits with the other parts that are going to that instrument. I understand that. Uh, so mass produced things while they all look alike and you can make a lot of them for, uh, you know, a lot less money, mm -hmm. uh, if they're organic instruments and a guitar is organic, mm -hmm. you're ma made out of wood, mm -hmm. um, then, then the more you treat things the same, the more inconsistent the outcome. And so when we build everything, we treat it uniquely and, uh, and we're, you know, adding a pinch of salt or, you know, it's, I, I use I the it. comparison with wine too. You know, if you're, if you're a winemaker and even if you're, getting your grapes from the same vineyard every year and you're making the same kind of wine every year, mm -hmm. those grapes aren't the same. That's right. You know, the, the season changes and the amount of water and sunlight they get changes and the, the, the uh, volume of the harvest takes more minerals out of the soil. So the, the grapes aren't consistent. If you use exactly the same formula when you're making that wine every year, the wine is going to taste different. Just because of the nature. The, the, Just because of nature. Yeah. And if you try and make it the same every time, if you use artificial means to get it to be the same, well, then it's not art. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's just mass produced grape juice. A mold. Yeah. Right. I get it. I get it. Well, that's fantastic so, to know that. <laughs> yeah. So that's what makes these instruments. Uh, so well balanced and so consistent mm -hmm. is that we're, you know, we're building them one at a time, really. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jeez. I, I, I just, uh, I just love your guitars. I, I always get off when I come to see your factory, <laughs> man. <laughs> you said something about you got to get on a gig. I don't want to hold you too long. Are you okay? Yeah, I got, I got, a, I got another, uh, 10 minutes or so. Okay, good. That's good. So um, when we get back to playing, looks like a lot of people want us to play Days and Wine of Roses again. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of requests. <laughs> okay. Man, that, you know, I'm ready. let's tell them about that record and let's tell them about our next record because I guess you're going to have to come to Columbus pretty soon, aren't you? Uh, I have to. I got to show I'm you ready. something. I got to show you something. I just bought this. I finally gave myself permission to buy myself a gift. This is one of the best microphones to put on the bottom of a Leslie. It's called an oh, R wow. it's called an RE twenty and I'm holding it here until you get here like a shotgun. Because <laughs> I'm waiting for you. So let's tell them about our record, man. Yeah, that was a that was a lot of fun. Um, we called it uh, New Adventures, I think, which was kind of a takeoff of the continuing adventures of uh <laughs> jimmy and wes of jimmy and wes yeah. so for, it was it was new adventures of tony and howard <laughs> and um and we recorded it i guess it's about five years yeah got it that, i'm not wow, sure has it been you, that long uh, maybe not quite but it's got to be pretty close well was my son born maybe was my son born yet no he was not born yet uh no he was not well he's around now man if he comes around <laughs> it's, it's it's like a tornado <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to see him oh hopefully, man uh, hopefully it won't be for high school graduation well you know i look at your um, son now he's in college you know he's a man he's now. out of college he's, oh, already yeah, he's, uh, he's 23, and uh, he's in grad school now. Oh, my gosh. He's at uh, Johns Hopkins, and he's uh, teaching for two years for Teach for America. I was just, playing, like your, I was just playing your piano, and we were talking about him going to college. That's right. Yeah, yesterday. Man, Howard, wow. 
Wow. Yeah, I can't believe um, we're about the same age, too, right? We're within a year of one another, I think. Uh, I was born in 59. So I was born in 60, so I'm 60 years old now. You're a, you're a young man. <laughs> <laughs> well, when are you going to come up? We got to, I guess we're just going to have to like do this now. And uh, we, we, we got to do it. Why don't you just make a, a pass we'll up pick here? Because I'm yeah, ready. We'll... I bought the microphone, the extra microphone. Uh, I'm ready. I got a car. I can drive there. We'll do I'm, a Friday. Actually... We'll do a Friday show here yeah. and then maybe record something and then you can head back. I would love to do that. And I'm, I'm I, I had COVID. I, I think did you I, have COVID I, also. I know. I'm not sure. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah so I, I had COVID back in July. Oh and, boy. Um, and fortunately didn't require hospitalization. Both my wife and I had it. Thank God she gave it to me. Because I'd never live it down if I gave it to her, man. And uh, and so, fortunately, you know, it was uh, it was re I recovered from it with no lingering uh, issues, and I still get tested and I still have antibodies. So I kind of feel bulletproof for the time being um, to be able to do stuff like this. I'm getting ready in March uh, to go up uh, and do a, a live stream with my friend Carl Latham. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You've yeah. met Carl. I think we've yeah. played together yeah. before. Yeah, I like Carl, man. Good drummer, man. And uh, Lawrence Hobgood on piano. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, um, John Lee on bass. Yeah. We played with and Carl so gonna... at Good Times. Wasn't it Good Times? That's right. That's right. Is that is that club still in business? I... Uh, they're still in business, but they haven't opened since March. Oh, my God. How did, and how they've been the doing some refurbishing. And... Um, uh, they're going to reopen, but they haven't reopened yet. Oh, so my. when they're ready, we'll be back. Okay, we and, have to uh, go do the that. The Jazz one. Corner has been able to continue. They've had a couple shutdown periods, mm. but they're uh, they're back now. Oh. And, What's the lady um, that owns that? What's her name? Lois Masteller. Please give her my best. Uh, she's such a I sweetheart. I, I miss all of those people down there. And, I can't wait till I come down and we'll tear up the place, you know. We have had some great gigs there. We sure have. And then, and of course, in, uh, with, uh, with um, uh, you know, uh, uh, South. Tony. Uh, 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 the drummer. Uh, Atlantic in, City. Yeah, in Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Um, um, what was his uh, name, was man? I to him today from Four Play. Yeah. Oh, Harvey Mason. Harvey Mason. Harvey Gosh, Mason. you know, isn't that we we are getting old, aren't we? <laughs> we are. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so you know, I've talked to Harvey about coming back down too. Maybe, you know, maybe we can maybe we can get him on our live stream and uh, and uh, session. Man, wouldn't that be something? There's that some new software that I'm experimenting with. Uh, one of my students, I uh, actually a friend of mine told me about it. Then I turned it on to one of my tech students. It's not Jam Kazam. It's another one. It's actually called Jam Ulus. And I think I think they've crossed some barriers where it may be possible uh, here real soon, not even with 5G, that we could actually do a little bit of jamming online. So I'll let you know when that technology comes. We'll have to goof around, okay? All right. Yeah, let's let's do something. And uh, there's an organization out in California um, that will – uh, actually support us doing a video of something like that. Oh, really? If we can make it happen. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to make so, that happen. <laughs> we need yeah. we need that company. <laughs> wow, you look great, Howard. Now, I got one more question. Since you had COVID, are you still going to have, do you still get the vaccination too? How does that? Yes, yeah, when it's available, but, you know. Yeah, well, um, As old as we are, we're too young to be in line right now. I know. Um, and uh, so I don't know when I'm guessing, you know, by March or April at the latest, uh, we'll be in line to be able to get it. Yeah. Um, and I'll take it, you know, as soon as it's available, I'll be standing in line for it. Fantastic. Well, me too. But in the meantime, I'm, I've still got immunity. So I'm feeling you know, a little bit cocky about being able to go out and play. Well, I mean, it's a blessing in disguise. I mean, you know, it's yeah. not like you asked to get it, you know. So, gosh darn it, Howard. Well, you look great, man. I just missed you so much. I can't wait to, 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 to get on the phone and say, find late night diner near me. 
<laughs> and, and by the way, we need to wish a happy birthday to our buddy Fareed. Ah, it is his birthday, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. His birthday today. Yeah, I like that picture of you and uh, Fareed together. Right. Was that taken when I was playing in New Orleans with them? Um, no, I, we were. I, I don't know where you were. We were together. Fareed and I, and I think we took that picture to send it to you. Oh, that's right. That's might have been to your, for your birthday. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. Okay, wow. It's what what memories? Wow. God bless that yeah. man. I miss I miss all my friends. You know, Jesus, yeah. that's crazy. Wow, well, Tony, Howard. thanks for inviting me on this. And you're welcome, man, sir. And your playing is so great, and I love <laughs> the fact that you've been able to technically. Uh, 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 keep it going surpass all of the hurdles necessary to let us still hear you play it's just swinging <laughs> and uh, you sound better and better it's hard to believe because you're already the best but every oh, time geez. i hear you uh, i fall in love with your playing all over again. oh god bless you howard for saying that thank you very much that means a lot to us you know as musicians we like to hear that kind of stuff so wow Wow, that's great news from you. <laughs> you be careful, and we'll be in touch. And I'm serious about that. Let's try to let's try to get it cooking again. I'm bored. I'm, man. I'm ready. Let's pick a date in March or April, and we'll make it happen. Okay, that's that's what we'll do next. You have a safe gig tonight, and I'll talk to you really soon. All right, Tony. Thanks again. Thank for you, having Howard. Me. God bless you, man. Thanks, everybody. See you. Bye bye. -bye. <laughs> wow, that's a great Howard Paul. And uh, wow, what a what a gentleman and uh, a businessman. He knows what time of day it is, and that's important today to really know what time of day it is. Um, I'm going to play one song because I got my other friend and guest who does a, a, a Wednesday segment on creating health of the mind and body and the spirit. Yeah, that's Dr. D. He's coming up in just a moment. But since there's been so many requests for the days of wine and roses, I got to do it. I got to do it. So this is on the, the uh, new adventures of Howard Paul and Tony Monaco. And I'll do my own little version of it with a medium swing today. And uh, then we'll bring in Dr. D. Let's see. I don't want to play this one too fast, right? But not too slow either. Then you fall asleep, right? That's going to be a simple song, a simple, simple groove. You know, sometimes it doesn't have to be complicated to be good. So this is my piano. Hey, Jeff. Thank you, man. We got to have some conversations. I miss you, too. How's everything up in northern New York, huh? Thank you. 
Yeah, we got Murphy Law working on us today. <laughs> We got a couple new sounds going on in the studio. I changed the effect on the uh, burn, and uh, I like this sound a little bit better. It's got a little more key click to it. What do you think? I like that. It's got a nice sound to it. Uh, great sobriety movie with great music. 
yeah, well, I'm glad to be sober today and uh, blessed. That's a blessing. Uh, also, I was telling uh, my friend Reggie's on the line. I bought a nice, you know, like we all get gear fever, but when there's a pandemic going on, <laughs> there's not a lot of loot for the gear, if you know what I'm saying. But sometimes I've found that less is more. And instead of buying the whole kit and caboodle for one sound, buy the right card that gives you that sound. So I've got this older uh, half-rack uh, Roland. It's called an XV2020. Uh, it's uh, actually kind of a really nice little little uh, keyboard. A uh, little rack, I'm sorry. And uh, I added the card to it. You can hear the tines, right? Isn't that cool? Wow, that's really nice, man. I like that. Let me play a little shuffle for Reggie. This has got a... Th I know you're going to like this one, Reggie. Let's see. By the way, folks, uh, I have a couple addresses down there. As you can see, the phone's not ringing very well today. If you feel so inclined to help out a musician, I'll take some. You could do it by PayPal ME. You could do it with Venmo. You could do it with Cash App, and you can even go to my website and give it with your credit card. So, just uh, just saying. <laughs> yeah, this is for Reggie, baby. This is for you. We're going to drive this one with a little distortion, too. We're going to make it like the old dirty organ, huh? Oh, yeah. Whoa. Welcome, Reggie.
Gabriel. City lights. Got to tell you a little story about city lights. City lights is a song that was recorded by Jimmy McGriff, but it was also recorded by Hank Marr. And uh, Hank Marr lived in Columbus, Ohio. So when I was growing up, I had the fortune to go hear Hank Marr uh, a lot. As a matter of fact, I went to listen to Hank so many times that uh, I started working with him a little bit, learning some things. And uh, he wasn't one of those that would hide the draw bars when I'd ask him questions. He showed me the ropes. And uh, I started taking little lessons with Hank. And uh, I believe that these things happen uh, for a reason, and it led me eventually to Jimmy McGriff. Uh, I love Jimmy McGriff's playing. I thought he was one of the funkiest organ players around. Uh, nobody could make a jump like Jimmy McGriff. And uh, when Jimmy got sick, um, it changed a lot. And uh, we were able to do an organ summit here in Columbus, Ohio, uh, hosted by the uh, Jazz Arts Group. It was me and Jimmy McGriff and the late Gene Walker on the saxophone and Louis Chamoose on the drums. And uh, Jimmy McGriff, I went to the airport to pick him up. It was the first time I got a chance to meet him. And uh, what a gentleman he was. And at the end of the concert, he started playing City Lights. He didn't want to quit. He didn't want to go home. That's the true spirit of the musician. Uh, we're here to play music. And bottom line is uh, we feel like uh, music is the most important thing. I'd like to thank you for joining our show today. I don't want to forget the segment uh, that we have. But first, let me take you to my website. Thank you very much, Michael. God bless you, man. You just made my dinner. <laughs> That's for real. God bless you, man. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my website, b3monaco.com. And uh, if you go there, you can look at taking lessons or buying some instructional stuff. Maybe booking on a calendar one of the uh, great groups that uh, have been going on with some of the great students of mine. Uh, anyway, you could even tip me. There you go. Uh, so I really do appreciate those things. Those things make the world go around. Uh, on Wednesdays, I've been doing a segment, The People I Admire, as you saw today, was Howard Paul, my good friend Howard Paul. Next week is going to be great guitarist Vinny Valentino. And Vinny and I work together with the incomparable Steve Smith on a collaboration called the Groove Blue Organ Trio. And the following week, guess what? Yes, yes. Start spreading the word. Steve Smith will be my guest. So you'll get to meet the real Steve Smith. We'll talk about music. We'll talk about life. And we'll talk about uh, how we miss each other. So a lot of great guests coming on Wednesdays. Next Wednesday, Vinny Valentino. The following week, the great Steve Smith. And the list goes on Monday. My student will be um, Monty Hogan. And Monty is from Fort Collins, Colorado. And as you know, on my Monday segments, um, I always feature one of my present or past students. Uh, and then Friday, this Friday, we'll have the great Eddie Bayard on saxophone and Tony McClung. 
uh, on the drums. And that segment is partly sponsored by uh, the segment that I'm going to play. I know we're going over, but hey, it's worth it. Um, Dr. Kenny Davis. So I'm going to bring you to the feed where Dr. Kenny Davis is ready to give us some advice on how to deal with these crazy times. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado from me, Dr. Kenny Davis. Hello and welcome to Creating Health, Mind, Body and Spirit. I'm Dr. Ken Davis of the Davis Advanced Health System and uh, looking forward to this uh, little message again that uh, Tony so graciously allows me to present every week. Today's uh, discussion is a follow-up uh, of the uh, message I gave on uh, last week's show on uh, Be Do Have. And over the next several uh, weeks, uh, it's going to follow a, a particular pattern that I feel would be very helpful to those that are uh, uh, listening to the show. You know, in my practice uh, in Montclair, New Jersey, where I am, uh, and over the years, uh, I've, uh, I've presented a uh, kind of a, uh, a technique uh, or a recommendation to get clarity uh, with individuals to what their dream life is their dream in their business life and, and their dream in their personal life. And again, it, it ties into what we, again, as I mentioned, discussed last week on Be, Do, Have. And many individuals, uh, patients that I uh, talk to about uh, this concept, have great ideas uh, for uh, business and things in their personal life that they want and they want to attain, but many times they, they want it, but they, they don't have enough clarity about what it is or even a belief structure uh, in which they can attain it. So there is an exercise that I have uh, many, many individuals do, and it's called the, if there were no rules and I couldn't fail, and money is not an issue. Because many times finances uh, come into play or, as an example, well, you know, I, I want to do this, but I don't have enough money, and, and all of that particular belief system. Remember, we talked about in Be, Do, Have that if we, it never works if we have it first and then we don't take action, we have to be it first. And that's what this exercise will tie into over not only this talk, but also over the next several weeks. So what I have individuals do, and I would like you, my audience, to do the same. And you can do it for your business life and you can implement it for your personal life. Here we go. Take a piece of paper out and write down on your paper, if there were no rules and I couldn't fail at what I was attempting to do, and money's not an issue, money's not an issue, what is my dream life, what would it be? My dream life. In business, for example, I would have uh, an import-export business, I'd be traveling to uh, Europe every week, of course, when COVID is over. I would be driving uh, uh, a uh, Ferrari around the Autostrada. I would be helicoptering in, <clears throat> and so on and so forth. Meaning that, what's my dream life, business life? No rules, could be any way you wanted it to be. Money's not an issue, it could be any way you wanted it to be. If there were no rules, you couldn't fail at it, and money's not an issue. So what I want you to do is with your paper, I want you to write down 
what that would look like. Because also I learned that unless you put something on the map first, the universe can't grab it. You have to have clarity in your mind first, then it becomes an idea that something can wrap around. There were no rules and I couldn't fail and money's not an issue. What's my dream life? Business. It could be 40 pages. 40 pages. Do this for your personal life and do it for your business life. Again, just to hammer home the point, if there were no rules and I couldn't fail at it and money's not an issue, what's my dream life and what's my personal life? Have two separate journals that you write in or papers. Again, there's no rules. It could be as long as you want it to be. Then what after you have listed all the components where you have clarity about what that looks like, I want you to then ask yourself and write this question down. Who would I need to be or become to have this dream life uh, in business and in my personal life? Say it again. Who would I need to be or become to have this life in business or or my dream life? So I'll give you an example. And remember, this is addressing the B part again. I'd have to maybe meditate. I'd have to exercise. I'd have to lose weight. I'd have to dress differently. I'd have to talk differently. I'd have to communicate better. I'd have to sleep more. I would have to feel more confident. I'd have to, whatever those things there are that would need to change in the B part of you, write those down. Write those down. And do that for your business life and for your personal life. Now again, there could be 10 of those things that would need to change, or there could be 50 of them. And the third part of the exercise that I would like you to do, once you list who you would need to be or become to have this dream business life and personal life on a scale of minus 10 to plus 10, I want you to rate each of the areas that you said would have to change in you. I want you to rate it from minus 10 to, so let's say I'd have to communicate my feelings more to people. So maybe I'm a minus eight there, and then I'd have to be more confident that maybe that's a minus two. So again, once you establish who you need to be or become to have this dream life, business and personal, rate it minus 10 to plus 10 for each particular category that you said would have to change. And then on, in our next session, there's a technique that I'm going to give each person. We'll talk about this on how you can then change those components in the B part. So again, your exercise and the talk this week is about if there were no rules and I couldn't fail and money's not an issue, what does my dream personal life look like? And then what's my business life? What do I want that to be? Remember, no rules, you can't fail. It can be any way you want it to be. Now, also, after you write your lists out for both personal and business, I want you to put it away for about 48 hours, for a couple of days. Just put it in a drawer somewhere, and then I want you to put, take it out again. And I want you to look at what you wrote and make any changes or additions or subtractions to it uh, that you feel you may need. If there's nothing that needs to change, fine. So now we've established it, we've put it on the map. And that's a big step to have clarity about what it looks like and the fact that you can't fail at it. So it could be any way you want it. There's no rules and money's not an issue. And then we'll talk about this in our next session. And then I'll give you a technique or a procedure that we, you can begin to do to, to make major shifts and changes in the B part of your being. Okay. 
It's a very powerful exercise. I've given this to thousands of people over the years, and uh, I hope you'll try it, and then next week we'll discuss it again. Okay, I'm Dr. Ken Davis, Davis Advanced Health System, and uh, feel free to reach out or contact me. You can do so by my email, which is info at Davis AHS. Keep enjoying your music and keep enjo enjoying, you know, Tony Monaco, this incredible musician that we all have the good fortune to listen to every week. God bless, and we'll see you next week. There you go. Uh, this guy, let me tell you about this guy, uh, Kenny Davis. He and I became friends. He actually came to me, started uh, music lessons. Uh, this gentleman is uh, like me, uh, a little uh, later in life. Not too late, though. He's training for his second bodybuilding competition in his uh, mid-60s. mid Can you believe that? So here's a man that uh, really... Uh, is what he's what he talks about and he's the gentleman that sponsors my band to come over here and play every friday night he said to me tony until you can find some other sponsors i'll continue to give you enough so that you could bring your drummer and your guitar player out so you can have a trio to play with on friday so that's not just words uh, that's action so uh, that's why i decided to uh, have um dr davis be on our show as a segment because uh the stuff that he talks about uh i actually listen to and follow uh and because i believe that uh it's not about words it's about action you know it's about doing these things and making it happen so thank you for uh listening to uh dr davis i i, I tell you if uh you just pay attention a little bit to what he says uh it's good advice and it'll give you something to do while you're home. Uh, so get that paper out and <laughs> start writing a list. Hey, I'll, I'll close with something funky. My wife just made me some delicious pasta. Whoa! So I'm going to have some here in just a minute. But I want to close it out for you. So I like this song from uh, Grover Washington. I even with this new piano sound, right? I got to close it out. I know we're running late, but... Hey, it's never too late to play music, right? <laughs> so here we go, ladies and gentlemen.
Okay, we'll see you Friday. Tony McClung on drums. Eddie Bayard on tenor saxophone. God bless you all. Have a good night. Thank you. How about Studio Fade?